Grammy nominations are just as honorable as winning the actual award, but could you imagine not even knowing you were nominated for the honor until decades later? THV 11's Journey Taylor has the unique story of one Arcanton who continues to sing, act, and perform today after that Grammy nomination 50 years ago. And I went back to Hope, but you know people at Hope didn't know who the heck I was. Love led astray from your Ravorta Frierson didn't stick long. You may know her as Ketty Lester, topping charts in the U.S. and U.K. in 1962 for her hit single, Love Letters, a song that went on to be Grammy nominated. The artist is also from Hope, Arkansas. Lester is a long way from home now, living, singing, and still performing in L.A. Can she hear me or will you be? I can hear you. Oh, I know that's right. <laughs> Thanks to her team, we were able to capture this interview as I spoke with her over the phone, and her memory was quite sharp about her time spent in Arkansas. Miss Ketty was the youngest of 15 children. They farmed and picked everything from cotton and cucumbers. They were also a generation removed from slavery. Her maternal grandfather was born in Louisiana. His father was the slave owner, and his mother was the slave cook. McKetty says she enjoyed her childhood. Originally trained as a semi-classical singer, she loved to perform and sing. One of her first full house shows was back at Yerger High School as she played Polly in Polly Put the Kettle On, We'll All Have Tea. I had a trio. It was me, my sister, Eva Pearl, and her, sis and her friend, Nona Jean. If we wasn't on the shows, there was no show. After high school, she didn't want to take the scholarship to Philander Smith College in Little Rock. She wanted to stay with her sister, Maddie. They took off to live and work with one of their older brothers in California. He gave us rules. It was three of them. Go to church, go to school, and no babies. That's fine for me because I didn't like boys no way and they didn't like me because I was always <laughs> but I was a fighter. Well, the fighter got some unique opportunities while searching for work in California. It was during her time working for a summer show she met the owners of the Purple Onion, a known club that had many notable entertainers on stage like Bob Newhart, Richard Pryor, and Maya Angelou. One night, I knock on her door and I said, Miss Angel, I'm Katie, and it's so nice to be with someone from a different country, and she started laughing at me. That's when Angelou let her in on a little secret. <laughs> she said, I'm from Arkansas, just like you. And I said, no, you're from Jamaica. She said, the Jamaican song. She said, do you know Candy? And I said, oh, wait a minute. I said, Camden, where? And there you have it, the two South Arkansas girls, miles and miles away from Hope and Camden, trying to break into the world of entertainment, becoming friends for years. But Katie would take off to New York, working as a prodigy under Dorothy Shea. And one of the first places she took Katie to audition was RCA Victor. Had told me, don't go with that company. It's one of the worst companies in the world. And it is. They will take every penny, they took every penny and sent my record all around the world. I never got a penny from them. Her song, Love Letters, would make it overseas, gracing the charts in Germany and Australia. And one year later in 1963, the international hit was nominated for a Grammy. I was never told that my song was, had been nominated to receive a Grammy. Not only that, blacks didn't go to the Grammys. Katie was nominated alongside other black artists, Ella Fitzgerald, Diane Carroll, and Lena Horne. I think it had to be 
that they put all the Negroes, as they called us then, in one category with one award. And that's the way it went. But 50 years later, a fan delivered the news in 2017. She said, do you know you were nominated? I said, no, don't believe everything you are told. I said, because I was not nominated. She said, oh, yes, you were. But her singing career also kickstarted her acting. From Blackula to appearing as the first woman of color on a daytime soap opera in Days of Our Lives, to Hester Sue Terhoon in Little House on the Perry in 1977. She could be seen on screens consistently in several roles, but out of all the people and sets she worked on, she adored one person the most. For some reason, I don't know why, but me and that boy was just together. Bernie Mac. Katie played Mac's aunt in House Party 3, Quite a movie, but she says she enjoyed having fun as well. River of sound, flowing from my and still to this day, performing when she can. At 88 years old, Katie says if God wants her, he will take her. But if he blesses her to live longer, she will not only be grateful, but she will also do what she can while she's here. The only thing I could say is I hope that people will respect me for what I have tried to do and that I did it to the best of my ability. Journey Taylor, THV 11 News. Mm, mm, mm. That was a great story. It really is. Better great. Better great good. and never late to know how better great she was. Yeah. Miss Caddy still performing in smaller venues and auditioning for upcoming films. She ain't through, y'all. Yeah, she was even inducted into the Arkansas Black Hall of Fame in 2022. She is keeping busy.